Tonight, the DuPont Company brings you Woman Alone, starring Virginia Bruce on the Cavalcade of America. First, here is Gane Whitman. Good evening. True but sad is the fact that the American home is not a safe place. Many accidents from slipping and skidding occur in our homes. Accidents that can be tragic. Make your home a safer place by using DuPont slip retardant wax on your floors. This slip retardant feature gives this wax an important safety factor in that it reduces the hazards of slipping and sliding. DuPont slip retardant wax is easy to apply and dries to a rich luster that adds to the beauty of your home. Try DuPont slip retardant wax. One of many DuPont better things for better living through chemistry. Now, Woman Alone, starring Virginia Bruce as Alice Evans on the Cavalcade of America. be off to Washington in fine old country Welsh style, Alice, with the choir singing you farewell. Everybody's been so kind, Mother. You'll be waiting to hear of the great things you'll be doing. Oh, Father, I, I just hope I'll make good. I'm a little afraid. Isn't every girl who's had your schooling a degree in bacteriology, so don't let anybody talk you down. Oh, take care of yourself, dear. I will, Mother. Goodbye. <laughs> was a wonderful farewell that day back in 1910 when I started out from our farm in Pennsylvania. The old Welsh song to say goodbye, father and mother standing there waving, and then I was alone on my way to a new job at a strange city, the job I'd spent years training for. The Pennsylvania landscape slipped by the train. It was silly, but I felt I had to reach out and hold it. Part of my life was over, and a new part was about to begin. Mind if I sit beside you, young lady? Oh, no, not at all. I heard you tell the conductor you was going to Washington. Visiting folks there? No, I have a new job there. Bacteriologist. Dairy Division, Department of Agriculture. Don't say. Young lady like you, a doctor. No, no, bacteriologist. You know, germs. I'm going to do laboratory research on milk. Well, all by yourself in a big city like Washington. You modern young lady. Oh, well, after all... This is 1910. Well, maybe so. But it's a man's world all the same. Can't sweeten sour milk. Well, I don't know about that. You never know where research will take you. Sitting there on the train that day, I wondered where research would take me. But I didn't know, and I couldn't see into the future. Tomorrow was a question mark. I went to work in Washington and the years marched by double quick. Before I knew it, the calendar said 1917. Well, here's another couple million bottles of milk for you, Miss Evans. Big boxes full of little bottles. Milk from Maine, milk from Wisconsin. Careful milk. now, there's 48 states, remember? <laughs> Always looking at milk in that microscope. You ever see anything interesting, Miss Evans? First year or two, I thought I did. But no. Didn't well, you ever realize a, a woman might not get a chance to make a reputation in science? Not unless she worked on tuberculosis germs or, or something big like that. Our milk is big. It's business for lots of farmers and big business for most dairy. <laughs> Maybe. But I promise you, nobody ever got a big name on milk research. Here, take a look in this microscope. Uh-huh. Well, see those germs? Yeah, sure. Hundreds of them. Those bugs come from cow's milk. From a bred cow, as a matter of fact. Well, what does that... That mean? cow looked healthy, but she was really sick. She lost her calf before it was due. Yes, I know that disease. Back home on the farm where I come from, they call it Bang's disease. 
And Bang was the Danish doctor who discovered that germ you looked at in the microscope. Well, there you are, Doctor. Bang's already discovered it, and it's called Bang's disease. So, <laughs> why fool yourself, Miss Evans? You're in a dead-end field. Well, Miss Evans, come in, come in. Uh, what's new upstairs in the milk lab these days? Not much, Doctor. My assistant says milk research is a dead end. But I have an idea. Do you remember the other day we were talking about Bang's cattle disease? Surely I remember. Is this a bright idea, Miss Evans? Inspiration? Well, at least an idea. Like any research idea, it might be wonderful or terrible. Yeah. I'm a pathologist, remember? Not a milk bacteriologist. That's just it. Doctor, you know animal diseases. Mm. Tell me, are there any animals other than cows which look healthy, yet excrete a disease germ in milk? Why, yes. Goats. You know, uh, Dr. Bruce discovered the germ on the island of Malta in the Mediterranean. They found the germ in the milk of healthy-looking goats. People who drank the infected milk got sick with Malta fever. Hmm. Bang's cow germ makes cows sick. And Bruce's goat germ makes goats and people sick. If you're wondering about any other four-legged animals... No, Doctor. Right now I'm wondering about the human two-legged kind. Something in back of my mind began asking questions about cow's milk, goat's milk. Questions about Bang's cow germs and Bruce's goat germ and how people got sick. Here's a uh, package for you, Miss Evans. Just came in. What? No nice big boxes with millions of milk samples from Nebraska and South Dakota? <laughs> this package says, handled with care, sample goat's milk. What are you doing with goat's milk? I sent for some. But uh, I thought you were working on cow's milk. I am. <laughs> Turn the lights on when you leave, will you? I'll be working late tonight. I examined the germ Bruce had found in goat's milk that made people sick. The Malta fever germ. Then I got some cow's milk samples, and I examined Bang's germ, the germ that sometimes killed unborn calves. I looked at the germs under the microscope, and I... They were twins. That couldn't be right. How could Bang's cow germ and Bruce's goat germ... How could two different germs be so much alike? I went back downstairs to talk to the doctor in the pathology laboratory. How are you, stranger? Haven't seen you in weeks. No, oh, I've been busy working with goat's milk and cow's milk. <laughs> Is this that bright idea you thought you had? Well, I don't know yet. Doctor, I I'm puzzled. Mm -hmm. Remember that talk about Bang's cow germ and Bruce's goat germ? Yes. Well, I've been examining them. I'm beginning to wonder if maybe they're more than just two different separate animal disease germs. Maybe they're twin brothers. But Bang's is a cow disease and Bruce's. I know the books say they're different diseases, but look, look here in this microscope. I'll turn on the light. Mm -hmm. That slide you're looking at is a sample of Bang's cow bug. Little thin stick. But some of them are short enough to look like round beads. Yes, yes. Now look at this second slide. Hmm. Practically the same thing. Thin sticks, some of them. The others look like round beads. And that second slide is Bruce's goat bug. You must have the slides mixed. No, no, I've checked. Well, maybe they look alike, but those germs certainly don't act alike. After all, Bruce's goat bug affects people as well as goats. Bangs affects only cows. <laughs> There's no excitement in science, like watching a locked door slowly open. If I was right, if Bang's cow germ hit people, I was on the track of something new, a disease without a name. I spent weeks preparing test tubes and sterile plate glass plates to grow germ colonies on. I watched them day and night. Miss Evans, it's late now, and I got to lock up the building. And you're still here? Yes, Mr. Olson, still here. Well, must be pretty much important. Mr. Olson, you were a farmer back in Denmark. Do you ever see a heifer lose her calf before her time? Oh, it was a cow disease, they say. Do you ever see a human being catch the same disease? You mean like, did I see a farmer lady lose her child before time just like a heifer lose? Yes, yes. No, the sickness is catching for cows only, Miss Evans. How could a cow disease hurt people? Mr. Olson, 
You see this test tube? Mm, looks like full of colored water. Full of the germs of a goat disease, Malta fever. Now, we know Malta fever travels in milk from goats to people. Now, look. Look at this other test tube over here in the incubator. Mm, that one looks like full of colored water, too. Yes. But this second tube is full of the germs of Bang's disease. The one they say makes cows lose their calves, but doesn't bother people. Funny. They look just exactly the same to me. Maybe sometimes the cow germ gets in the milk people drink, just like the goat germ does, huh? Yes, that's just what I've been thinking, Mr. Olsen. Maybe the cow bug isn't just a cow disease. Maybe it hits people, too. <laughs> Here's sample 209, Miss Evans. Thanks. I... I take back what I said a few months ago. Sure looks like you got something big here. Oh, I don't know. It bothers me. It's almost too simple. Why hasn't anybody noticed the comparison between the goat bug and the cow bug before? I think I know why. Maybe... What's the matter? Why are you looking like that? Miss Evans, I've been checking the research literature... Practically everybody who's worked with these germs has caught the Blaine disease. Well, after all, if you're in a laboratory, you can't avoid handling yes, the germs. Yes, you can. Easy. Drop the whole idea. Drop it? Just when the dead end you warned me about turns into an open highway? But what if you get sick? That's a different kind of dead end. No. I'm going to report this research to the Society of American Bacteriologists in December. I've got to keep working. <laughs> You are listening to Woman Alone, starring Virginia Bruce as Alice Evans on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Alice Evans, working as a bacteriologist in the dairy division of the Department of Agriculture in Washington becomes convinced of the similarity between what were thought two entirely different diseases, Malta fever, which struck at human beings, and Bang's disease, which affected cattle. It is her belief that the cattle disease can be transmitted to humans through cow's milk, as Malta fever is transmitted through goat's milk. The second part of our story opens at a meeting. The next paper on the agenda will be read by Miss Alice Evans. Uh, Miss Evans. It was the annual meeting of the Society of American Bacteriologists in December 1917. I'll never forget standing there reading my paper that night. I told them about Bruce's goat germ and Bang's cow germ. I said both these organisms were not completely separate as was believed. I said I thought they were related, like twin brothers. That report was, well, you might say it was one woman's Christmas gift to the world that December 30 years ago. And I never expected what happened next. Now, if I understand Miss Evans' paper correctly, and I think I do... She would have us believe that just because infected goats transmit the organism of Malta fever to humans through milk, it automatically follows that cows can do likewise with Bang's bacillus. It's an overly simple parallel, I think. I cannot help but be quite frankly skeptical of Miss Evans' work. If there were a close relationship between Bang's and Bruce's organisms... Why would not other, more highly experienced bacteriologists have noticed this sooner? If we accept your findings, Miss Evans, we would have to accept the concept that Bang's organism might travel through cow's milk to humans, thereby infecting a person with some disease. But it is a possibility. I want to be fair, Miss Evans, but I believe you're too hasty. If the germ is carried in milk, people should know it. And we scientists should wipe it out. And you expect us to accept this, Miss Evans, on the basis of comparing the two organisms in the laboratory and in the incubator and in your test tube? I have only... No, Miss Evans. 
Your conclusions would have to be confirmed in practice before we could accept them. Confirmed with cows and goats. Yes, and confirmed with clinical observation of human beings. Soon, though, in 1922, soon after I'd gone to work for the United States Public Health Service, the tide began to turn. Something very serious happened. Phoenix, Arizona. Health Department reports epidemic outbreak of Malta fever from infected goat's milk. Three dozen ill. Two patients whose cases were complicated by some other illnesses have died. Blood samples from all patients have been sent to Washington for examination. Here's another carton of blood samples from Phoenix, Miss Evans. Thank you. You do look tired, Miss Evans. Why don't you take it a little easier? Huh? Well, this is important. Put this sample into the centrifuge, will you, please? Full speed? Half speed will do. Pardon me, Miss Evans. May I see you a moment? Surely. Aren't you? Yes, I thought you'd remember me. I was very cautious about your work when you first published it. Ah, yes, Doctor. I remember you now at the meeting. Are you still skeptical? Frankly, I have to be. Your claim that Bang's disease can be carried through milk to infect the people who drink it, or that sort of talk can start trouble, Miss Evans. Oh, I doubt that. Especially since you haven't 100% proof. Well, what do you want me to do? Well, all I ask... Pardon me, but could you shut that thing off? Will you turn off the centrifuge, please? Thank you. If you've experimented, Miss Evans, in your test tubes in this laboratory, but you haven't really proved a thing with living farm animals. Well, Doctor, suppose, just suppose, I took one of these samples of human blood from those sick people in Arizona. It's swarming with millions of Bruce's goat germs. Suppose I inoculated a cow with it, one about to half a calf. Then, according to your theories, the goat disease would act like its twin, the cow disease. Exactly. And our experimental cow, sick with the goat bug, would lose her unborn calf. That's hard to believe. Well, to you, perhaps. But I believe she'd lose her calf as surely as if she had Bang's cow disease from the very start. Miss Bang Evans, I, I respect your ability. But to be frank, I doubt this experimental cow will even show a mild reaction. <laughs> Here's Melinda, just like you asked, ma'am. She's a fine heifer, Melinda is. And you can see she's sure expecting her calf come spring. Thank you. Will you hold this tray of instruments, please? Hey, surely, ma'am. Like to own a fine heifer like Melinda myself? Not if she had Bang's disease, doctor, and passed the disease on to people. If that's what she'd do. Now, as I understand it, you're going to inject some of Bruce's goat bugs The tray, into... please. This hypodermic syringe has germs that came from the blood of those sick people in Phoenix, Arizona. I remember that much very well indeed. Will you hold Melinda steady while I inoculate? Miss Evans, what's the matter? You look pale. Nothing. I... It's nothing. Tired, that's all. Overwork. Maybe you'd rather call off this whole experiment. No, sir. Hold Melinda still. Steady now. Here we are. Sorry, Melinda, but there are lots of youngsters who need good, safe milk. And now that Melinda is inoculated with goat germs... She'll lose her calf. Frankly, I'll believe it when I see it. I was sure I was right. I was sure Melinda would lose her calf. I was so sure she would... Good afternoon, Miss Evans. Oh, good afternoon, Doctor. Any word about Melinda? Well, I asked them to call me as soon as anything happened to her. If something happens? I'm quite certain. And I'm quite willing to be convinced. Fine. Suppose I come back in a week or two. Make it three or four. Let's give Melinda time. All right. But if your experiment fails... It won't. If it fails, I'll expect you to be fair. I'll expect you to withdraw those statements you made. What statements? About the possibility of Bang's disease traveling in milk from cows to human beings. Yes, of course. If I'm wrong, I'll withdraw every word. The days crept by slowly. And for some reason, my strength seemed to creep away with them. I had to push myself to keep working. Miss Evans, why don't you go home early today? Holiday? For you, yes. You, you need it. You... You look pale. Oh, a little sun will fix that. You worried about Melinda? No, I'm not. I'll keep an eye on her for you. 
When's the last time you saw Melinda? Yesterday. She looked fine. Fine. Just as though we'd never infected her with a couple of million bugs. Well, Miss Evans, feeling better today? Well, I... Why do you say we drive out to the country today to look at Melinda and her calf? If Melinda has a calf. Well, let's drive out and see. Well, I'm... I'm sorry. I, I'm rather... Well, I'm a little run down today. Yes, it must be quite a blow to see years of hard work wasted. No, I can't believe that. Nothing as frank as plain facts. You told me not so long ago. We don't know the facts in this case yet. But we will soon. People have started talking about this German milk, you know. Farmers, dairymen. It will be up to you to tell them this disease you say people get from cows. Undulant uh... fever. Yes, undulant fever. It will be up to you to reassure all those people. Excuse me, please. Surely. Hello, Miss Evans speaking. What's that? Yes? Oh, I see. I see. Will you send some of her milk down here to be tested, please? Thank you. Melinda? Yes. What happened? Forgive me, but could you come back in a few days? Our results won't really be complete until then. Well, here I am again, Miss Evans, waiting for the facts. The fact is, Doctor, that Melinda lost her calf. What? And furthermore, to be absolutely certain, I tested a sample of Melinda's milk and found the same kind of germs with which she was inoculated. If anyone had drunk that milk, he might have been infected. Oh, Miss Evans, I... Well, I hardly know what... I mean, if there's anything I can do... I can tell you what to do, Doctor. Start wiping out Bang's disease in our dairy herds and other farm animals. And we'll be starting to wipe out undulant fever in human beings. Do you realize how big a job that is? We're not afraid of big jobs. Let's ask the country's professional journals to tell our doctors and veterinarians about this tricky disease that that tires you so that sometimes you have a fever and sometimes you don't, so that it's hard to diagnose just what's wrong. Miss Evans, uh, uh, sit down. Let me get you a glass of water. Thank you. Uh, please don't bother, I'll be... I'll be... All right. Miss Evans. I was not all right. Sometime later, I had an operation, and I got a report from the laboratory. They had found Bruce's germ in my blood. I had caught undulant fever myself. Undulant fever. They called the disease in the form in which it hit human beings... But as I could tell them from first-hand experience, you didn't always have a clinical fever. So we chose a new scientific name, brucellosis. But new name or old, the germ was stubborn. So there I was, five years later, lying in a hospital in Norfolk, Virginia. But that didn't matter because... Miss Evans, it is our great honor to have elected you president of the American Society of Bacteriologists. Miss Evans, by unanimous consent, we confer upon you this honorary M.D. and doctorate in science. Those things made me very happy, yes. But what I liked best was to know that we'd started the job of making milk safe for millions of American families. Our farmers and dairy industry joined in the fight enthusiastically, wholeheartedly. And it seemed I could hear again the chapel choir singing the same tune they'd sung when I left home so long before. And the song, Companion in Arms, made me think of the men and women who work unseen, sometimes unheard of, in the laboratories of America, working to make life better and safer for all. Speaking for DuPont. 
As everybody knows, color can make all of the difference between a cheery room and one that is gloomy and dull. Scientifically used, it helps us feel better, see better, work better. To an increasing extent nowadays, industry is making use of the color psychology which every woman has discovered for herself in redecorating her home. In collaboration with illumination engineers, paint experts of the DuPont Company have worked out a scientific plan for the use of color, along with proper lighting in plant and office buildings. It is known as DuPont Color Conditioning. Color conditioning helps to increase production and reduce accidents. It has a tremendous psychological effect on the morale of men and women at work. It contributes materially to cleanliness and safety. For instance, the Gillette Safety Razor Company recently color-conditioned important areas in its large plant in Boston. In a razor inspection room, the upper part of the walls was painted light green, and the lower part, the dado, a darker green. A room in which shaving cream is packaged was painted in two tones of blue, with the ceiling white to reflect the largest possible amount of light. Improvement was noticeable immediately. To quote a girl who works for the Gillette Company, I see better, work better, and feel better at the end of the day. The company's chief engineer reports, DuPont color conditioning has improved the appearance of our entire plant. This practical interior painting plan increases efficiency and safety and boosts morale among our employees. Unquote. DuPont color conditioning helps Gillette employees look sharp, feel sharp, be sharp. So important an advance in color science do we believe color conditioning to be that we invite businessmen and those interested in industrial painting to write on their business letterheads to the radio section, DuPont Company, Wilmington, Delaware. Color conditioning, the scientific use of paint and light, is a development of DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. The music for the DuPont Cavalcade is composed and conducted by Robert Armbruster. Tonight's Cavalcade was written by Bernard Victor Dreyer. In the cast with Miss Bruce were Sidney Miller, Louis Van Ruten, Herb Butterfield, Howard Smith, Helen Spring, Fred Howard, Ninette Vallon, and Eddie Marr. Now, Gain Whitman with a few important words. Thank you, John Heaston. Ladies and gentlemen, this evening's broadcast will be the last DuPont cavalcade until Monday, August 18th. This doesn't mean that those of us who work to bring you a new show each week will spend the time lying on the sand at the seashore or loafing under the old apple tree. Much of the preparation for a cavalcade goes on weeks in advance. All of us, the directors, the writers, the musicians, and technicians, hope you have enjoyed our shows and the little stories of chemistry. Of course, we hope you'll be with us again when we return to the air on Monday, August 18th. If you care to write us, suggesting the type of cavalcade you enjoy most, we would appreciate hearing from you. And now, goodbye until Monday evening, August 18th. This is Jane Whitman wishing you a happy summer for the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.